there. Okay, right. Okay, and this is a wonderful news, right? Okay, and, and when Superintendent Lai was here, so okay, he always delivered us the wonderful speeches, and let's take one more look. And the clip, right? Okay, and Dalin City Hospital was really, really hospitable, and uh, they designed uh, like a big fund, okay, to people who are like like a weak in their eyesight, right? Okay, and the older words and the older postures and the older like brands there were, were just like like with like a big funds here, and uh, this make it clear. Clear to like elderly people. Well, it, it is not a big deal, but but this is a really heartwarming actions they do. Okay, and it makes like people to like recognize where they are and what department they are in really like easily. And we take care of patients from chronic diseases to kind of like a severe, okay? And we take care of people in the city, into the community, and everybody. We, we really care about everyone's health. And we also have a geriatric and a pavilion care, like, like for people here, when senior citizens come over and they just stay in one clinical room and they can just have all their problems solved. They don't have to like hang around the hospital. Do you feel this is a really hospitable and heartwarming and they, they do everything just for our senior citizens, right? Okay. So here at the video clips that you see, they are adapted in the Lotus, like, like in the Lotus Sutra. And Mr. Zheng Yuan was so touched by this. They are sincerely just performing the Sutras, the Lotus Sutra, okay, as the year end ceremony, and they feel really different this way okay and before they did such performance they had to read the lotus sutra so they had a study group and they also have a great idea okay they want to take care of, of like people in like uh, the southern eastern i mean the, the southern taiwan so they design okay their own like like a brand just like the spirit of the fireflies and master zheng yuan even disciples in daring are just like a fireflies and uh, we will use our glimmers and take care of the patients in the southern taiwan with just one aspiration i'm looking forward to you were like aspirations, okay, every doctor. Don't forget about your first aspiration. And Mr. Zheng Yuan was very touched, you see. And during the pandemic, unlike, uh, unlike uh, well, uh, others, right, okay, they held a, a lot of activities online and spread their ideas and the great love online. So through the internet, okay, they also had a lot of like a forums and uh, many people were just online. And we want every citizen, okay, to have the right idea towards your health. I don't want you to be like a super, like, like, like a superstitious. This is not the right thing there. And this is an online forum held by Dalin Siji Hospital sharing their experience. Then they had over 10 million people online. Wow. So let's welcome and give them big superintendent line a big hand online. Okay. And now we are Welcome, that's welcome, Superintendent Lai Ang Lai. I like to be with you because you have a positive energy. Let's go, Superintendent Lai. We can hear you. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, and the volunteers online, good day. Yeah, we can see you. Okay, we want to see you like handsome face there. So, good day, Doctor Lai. Now we have a lot of like volunteers on the spot and online. So we are looking forward to your speech. I'm very happy that I can be with you talking about vitiligo. Well, okay, and please also share your PowerPoint, please. Yes, there you go. I'm happy. Okay, Venerable Master Zheng and the Masters from the abode and all the volunteers of Suji, good day. I'm so happy that I want to talk about all about better LIGO. Around 12 years ago, at the late night, okay, just before I finished my work, it was really late in the midnight, and suddenly there came a student dressed in green uniform with her like a book bag. And uh, finally, she saw me. And uh, I felt that she was under great pressure. And I thought that she must have come over right after she finished her class. And she told me that she suffered from vitiligo. And in Taipei, she just couldn't receive the proper care. And uh, she didn't cure. She, she didn't receive like a proper cure. And uh, therefore, such a disease was abandoned. And I asked why you just came over from Taipei. And uh, she said, this is a bit LIGO. I said, that's right. This is right. And uh, she just couldn't do anything but to come over to me. And I'm, I said, I'm sorry. And I just said, sorry. I, I I don't think I could do anything because I had no such experience here. And the student therefore told me that uh, somebody introduced me, okay? They, therefore, she know that uh, it is a, a disease about uh, like, like a rheumatism. Like, uh, so I did think that I wanted to do something and therefore, I just had a blood test for her. And she was just 17 and 80 years old. But a week later, and I realized that like, she suffered from SLE, systematic lupus erythematosus. And this is a, a rheumatism, which will cause like a great damage to your liver uh, and, and your uh, and your even brain. And it you know, was the first time that I learned that rheumatism may attack also her skin. And beta ligo actually hurt her very much. But uh, what was in my mind uh, was, was that, okay, the, the young student just came over to Dali to me, and, and uh, so she went back home to Taipei, and how late it must be. I guess that she didn't want her parents to know that she came over to me for the bit of LIGO, okay? And the last train back to Taipei may begin after 10.30, like, like p.m., okay? Therefore, okay, I, I was I, I was really heartbroken for this young lady, the, the, the girl student, and I worried very much about her security, right? Why did I tell you such a story? And actually, I want to share with you that vitiligo was a, was a disease that was abandoned by like a dermatologist in Taiwan. Because you know, it, it, it was already it, it has already been in Taiwan for over a hundred years, and better and the vitiligo is a disease that can be cured at all. But I don't want to disappoint a girl student from Taipei. 
And I don't want her to also tell others that I didn't do anything for her. It really hurt her. So today I want to convey my idea about what what is what what is rheumatism. And we also have like a precision treatment, like a precision medicine. And I also want to tell you how you can treat vitiligo. And we have to know where the problem is and what's wrong in the your body. And today, we gathered the experience like over forty thousand patients. And uh, I want to share with you a substantial improvement towards vitiligo and how it can be cured. So rheumatism is curable, and the rheumatism cannot be abandoned because it can be cured. Okay, you know it. But vitiligo really beat a lot of people's confidence. Especially girls, okay, and they were like 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 a rejected cruelly, okay, because it is it was kind of mission impossible. Although it was just a skin problem and it was not a big deal, but it really influences people so much. So today I wanna tell you a story about a young lady like twenty seven years older, and she suffered from the third cerebral embolism. Actually, the lady was my colleague's wife, and she got like a brain stroke. But I thought not only that, she must have also suffered from some other disease too. Okay, oh yeah, and I realized that she got like a low in platelet and the immune like a thrombocytopenic purpura with like like a. Like 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 an intermittent like a M M Noria and the Oligo Man Noria, and as she just was sent to the hospital, and she was sent into the wrong section, and she was like like treated also in the wrong way. Okay, well well, and for example, for cerebral embolism, then you will go to some other departments aside from my department. Then, if like this twenty-seven-year-old lady suffer from like four different diseases, and therefore she had to be like diagnosed in different in four different sections, right? How suffering? But let me tell you, actually, they are all about rheumatism, rheumatology, and this is okay. This is a rheumat. Rheumatic disease and the immune disease, right? And、uh, it means that they can just such disease can really attack the all your organs, okay, in your body. And also, the girl suffered from like a purpura, but she just got recovered, okay. But、uh, just days or years later, she suffered from something else, right? So they. Are easily like like a misdiagnosed, diagnosed, okay, and、uh, such disease will just beat the patient until you are beaten, okay. And we can see the cells of the immunology, but but you know how can we see that? We only can can see all the cells through the like 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 a microscopes. And、uh, we we have a lymphocyte and、uh, monocytes, okay, in our body. And we also have cytokines there, okay, and they are very, very tiny in our body, and they they exist because they transmit all the signals towards your body and and your organ systems, and if they work like improperly, and they may have some kind of problems, right? And this is the immunology, immunological problems that may attack our immune system, okay. And、uh, this is all about the auto antibodies, right? Okay. And how about like like other cells, like the neutrophil or like the platelets, and they are the target that may be attacked, okay, by such like a, like like a rheumat rheumatisms, okay, and 
wherever the 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 cells go, and they will just attack your cells inside your body. And that that is what my teacher told me. And especially for a young girl, and a young girl just go to the to departments, right? And therefore, he told me that I have to consider whether the young girl suffer from rheumatism, and they have to come to me to the like an immunologist department. And if you don't know what this is, you may suffer. Then maybe you have to come to me. It's like 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 a, like a systematic lupus, like a erythematosus, and.、Uh, It is also a, a problem, maybe you know, on your skin and maybe on your vessels, right? So for skins and for vessels,、uh, you have to go to two department stores. I mean, not department, two departments. But it is time for you to come over to me, right? Okay. And if you got the, like like a lupus here, lupus erythematosus, then maybe you will go to the skin department, right? And for polymyositis or dermatitis, then you go to skin department, and then you have a, like a hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and you go to some other departments, and you go to the gastroenterology department. But actually, you are right and you are wrong. And the sources is that when the virus just attacked our livers. And therefore, we suffer from hepatitis, like B or C, right? And your liver becomes the battlefield of the viruses, right? So it is also immunology. So here are the like like a immunology on your organs, right? So inside all the organs, then we may find the the path. Of uh, like uh, rheumatism, and uh, this is all due to the like、uh, immunology. So every section can have uh, like uh, some kind of treatment for patients, right? But may not be okay. So beta ligo is a such example, right? If a patient suffer from beta ligo on their skin, so. What can they do? Okay, yeah, I I think our doctors are really careful. Therefore, it causes them they are not to treat our disease like a beta ligo. So let's talk about the development, the history of development of like a human medicine. And in the past, like we have a witch doctor medicine, and then we have like a clinical side medicine. Well, and for example, if you suffer from like a stomach ache, then doctors will just take care of your stomach, right? Okay, and we will just listen to patients come like 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 a complaint, like whether they have like any pain or any aches in the on their any organ. So this is a like a clinical science medicine, and after that, and we have like a. Image at like we we have like a medication image right, and、uh, we develop a endoscopy, and、uh, we create a, like a images inside your organ. For example, and the sonography, like a computed like a tomography, and we also have like an electrocardiogram, or we have a brain wave, and they are so called like、uh, image medication. And more like advanced, okay. We have like a functional medicine, which means like we use MRI, we use like a postural medicine, like a nuclear medicine, and check on our body, okay. And we have so many different ways to just diagnose the what disease like a patient may suffer. And within the thirty years, then therefore, like we have a molecular medicine which can more precisely diagnose the disease from a patient, because like we have a gene identification and we have a gene sequence analysis and we have a signaling molecules. 
that can precisely see through what the disease may be, and that we can give like a care for treatment. And this is the so-called the precision medicine. Okay. So precision is important for a patient because you know, we want to cure them like accurately. Just as I said that we have over 2,000 different kinds of lymphocyte cells, but if only one had the problem, so I just had to just cure and concentrate on the one lymphocyte cell. And this is a precision medication. And this is what I want to share with you like briefly. And for now, we have more advanced, like a medical improvement. And when we go to a hospital, and uh, we have uh, so many like section departments, and they are, for example, gastroenterology or chest medicine or cardiology or also PDX, right? Even like a plastic surgery and they are traditional medicine that has existed in Taiwan for over a hundred years. And let's talk about the like, newly developed medicine, for example, nuclear medicine, like hematology or oncology, immunology or rheumatology. And this is really precise, right? And uh, we cure like uh, people's diseases through the blood because, you know, inside the blood, you know, we have cells and maybe there are the problems on your cells, right? But we can't see any cells, right? So we need like, 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 a, like a gene sequence like analysis, so we can just precisely cure a disease of a patient really precisely, all right? And for example, then we have a, a lot of like a departments like oncology, okay, that uh, are kind of precise for us, right? So here are a lot of like a newly development medicines in Taiwan. And we really have to deal with a lot of challenges that were left like over a hundred years ago, some disease uncured or something like that. And today, let's also talk about the limits, okay, of the traditional medicines, right, okay? And we rely very much on the molecular medicine, okay? And if we don't have any, like, a substantial improvement on this, then diseases are really difficult to be diagnosed, right? And in Taiwan, we also need some kind of health insurance or some other insurance, right? Okay? So that we can have the money for the disease, right? And uh, I think also one more problem is that, uh, well, because of the like a rural and, and the ur ur urban divides, right? Like doctors are not too willing to just go to the rural areas for like a cures or treatments there. And we are lucky that we are in Taiwan and uh, the problem is now getting solved. It's getting better now, okay? And we also have to know the media, I mean, how the disease is developed, okay? Okay, for example, some kind of ulcers, and if you know ulcers, and this is easy because you know the knowledge from books, right? But how about, just I said, like a systematic lupus erythematosis? I don't think that you know something, you know a lot, you know enough about that, okay? So this is a challenge, right? Okay, and it is all about the molecular medicine. And uh, we know little uh, about the cells and uh, you don't have to mention like a molecule. Okay. And then now let me tell you in our hospital that you can just do the blood test and uh, two minutes later, and I can just know some like details toward your, your cells and like, your blood, right? And since I know the information about that, so I know how to cure your disease like properly, okay? So this is a development. Uh, there's a molecular biology and recombin recombin recombination protein and monoclonal antibodies. 
and a lot of other uh, advanced and uh, treatment of uh, rheumatism and and because of this uh, scientific technology advanced in the medical field that will that help uh, people uh, in the and that help people with uh, various diseases, especially in the blood disease, blood related disease and uh, cancer. And what is a vitiligo? And many people, they uh, suffer from the vitiligo. They are, uh, some of them had, uh, had used medicine for many, many years, but still didn't see the improvement in the condition. And uh, vit vitiligo is an organ-specific immune disease. disease. Um, and when dermatologists, uh, they see the people suffer in uh, with the condition of vitiligo, they would uh, would not want to admit this, um, to treat, to give the treatment for the patient with the vitiligo. They say you will be, you need to be able to, uh, to live in harmonious with the vitiligo disease. But actually, it is very hard for young people who is very young and just got married. It's very hard to get uh, to live in harmonious with vitiligo um, because there's a, a lot of uh, appearance to change. Um, the pig. Uh, how does the pigment of the skin would uh, become abnormal? Who is attacking, uh, attacking the pigment of the skin? A lot of people they were they were rejected by dermatologists and they gave up on treatment. And, and a lot of information on even on the internet in the in the past that uh, that even doctors could not uh, was not sure what's the cost of the uh, vitiligo and now uh, in the medical field we're sure it's um, it's a rheumatism and immunity disease. And a lot of a lot of patients they used to be gave up on their on their dermatologists and their doctors, and the um the the vitiligo were the it's not only the the symptoms was not only in uh, attacking the uh, skin that but uh, also they would uh their they would come with a lot of complications in the health condition of the patients and uh, the patients would totally gave up and affecting their the, the daily lifestyle because the of all kinds of complications in the health in their health condition. Um, how do we give the, uh, the treatment of uh, vitiligo? Uh, uh, you. Uh, uh, it's uh, some. It's it's traveling. Is a traveling, uh, uh, and it's in the uh, all over the body, though the on the skin, and so you you are not able to treat just one spot of the skin change. You have to you have to give the treatment of overall body treatment, and some people some. A lot of patients with vitiligo, they still suffer. They also suffer with a thyroid disease. And this vitiligo is the total, the general body condition is not only just on one spot of the skin, it's related to immune immunity systems. So it's uh, about immunology. 
in in the past, a lot of patients they gave up, or they are seeking for the treatment from uh, alternative medicine. And some people they uh, they even complained about their their parents they gave them um, they inherited this disease, or they uh, the their parents, they complain their parents gave them this disease. Uh, they uh, uh, make a lot of effort in time, but still could not uh, receive a proper treatment. Uh, some people, they also, uh, they were told that vitiligo would not cause any physical impairment. It is often considered in and important by physicians, but um, vitiligo patients repeatedly experience this interest from the medical world regarding their skin problem. And nearly 50% of the patients were not ade adequately informed about their disease and its treatment during their first doctor visit. Uh, in, the, in the Taiwan medical field, there are uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, a lot of patients are still rejected by their their doctors, and you can see from this patient that uh, that you can see the vitiligo appeared on his face, and this person appear vitiligo appears on the forehead. And this person, the vitiligo appeared on the skin of the throat. And this patient, uh, she says she has vitiligo over her body. And this is only one part of a vitiligo appearance on her palm. And, and we see that the, uh, the vitiligo we can see that this um, this patient, uh, the banana site of the skin is is the determining is the cells that determine the skin color of human being, and there there are a lot of um, beside the banana site we see that the um, the trace, the trace, the trace, the uh, banana antigen present in besides the banana site, and you you can see that uh, uh, this, this this is a this is a lupus or lupus or vitiligo. Uh, if it affect if it affect vitiligo affect only on the skin. And we will be able to find the antigen uh, because the antigen present a cell um, in the skin. We will be we will be able to identify this cell to uh, help out the skin condition. So uh, the anti antigen will uh, travel to the skin to uh, attacking the 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 skin cell, and it would affect also on the other organ. And we we used to uh, only guess about that the vitiligo the 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 it would attack the. Uh, only not only on the skin, but also attack the um, internal organ, and now it is confirmed. And this person, this person has a dermal dermatar dermatar myositis, and he's she has the uh, she has the. Uh, Although she, she doesn't have any severe symptoms, but when we have the blood test, and she has a, a leukemic, a leukemic um, and also quantitative white blood cell abnormality. So the blood blood cell was low. And so we found out that she, uh, from the blood test, we found out that she, uh, she had, um, 
um, not only the the skin problem, she on, also have the immunity problem, uh, immunity disease. And, and 4% and 11%, although they also, uh, the 4% or 11%, they not only have vit vitiligo, and they also have the um, other immunity, uh, immunity disease. And also, uh, when you have blood test, when you wanted to do the draw the blood test, you need to uh, uh, do the detailed exam on the uh, blood test. So uh, many, uh, I have uh, some, uh, our patients, they, uh, after the three months of treatment, they, uh, the vitiligo would, uh, be, uh, would return back. And, and also, and the, the, the cell will regenerate. And also the 98% of the uh, treatment were uh, effective for 98% of patients. And you can see that uh, the pigment regeneration is, uh, is the condition is improving from the picture. And also the margin is to become blurry and blurry from the picture. You see that it's in, the condition is improving. Uh, well, not, uh, although uh, 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 the, the medical field is a very conventional uh, field. And, uh, and some disease that we didn't learn that in medical field, our professor did not teach any knowledge about that disease. Do we want to offer any treatment or try to offer treatment to our patients that, uh, to treat their condition regards to the uh, disease that I did not learn in the medical school? I uh, wanted to accept the challenge and not to escape from the unknown, the disease that I haven't learned in the, in the past in the school. Uh, when I'm very grateful that I have this. It's my pressure to, uh, to be able to, um, to share with you my knowledge and something that was unknown and now is curable and treatable. And we are very grateful, uh, Dr. Lai, uh, he is professional sharing and and we can't have confidence from his sharing that uh, we need to seek for proper treatment. Uh, Superintendent Lai, please stay online, stay online, and please back up a little bit because you are too close to the screen. And, and what we need to improve our immunity by exercise and seek and get proper treatment. Uh, vitiligo, uh, we uh, from Kaohsiung, a, a reader from Kaohsiung, um, from listening to Superintendent Lai's sharing, we, we know that uh, vitiligo is not only a skin disease, it is also affecting the whole body. So it will need uh, proper treatment. And very nice to hear the superintendent like he is a kind and very full of uh, compassion. And he is so take good care of his patients. And we're very grateful. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your great sharing. And we hope that uh, you will be able to come share with us next year again. All right, so next, uh, let's welcome.